So I was doing some cleaning over the summer because it apparently takes a pandemic for me to finally clean my room. And I came across my fourth grade English composition notebook stashed in the back of my IKEA bookshelf. Most of my composition notebook was filled with school assignments. In fourth grade, I apparently had an extreme hatred for brain injuries, an obsessive interest in my teacher's jury duty experience, and had a love for increased responsibilities. When I lost interest in English class, the notebook also became a chance to showcase my artistic talents, which are squeezed along the margins of the notebook. While some doodles look like they could be on display at the lure, others show my penchant for creating worrying inventions. Take this for example. This drawing's a little abstract, but don't worry, I'll explain. This is a person hooked up to a brain scanner. This machine, using science, will determine whether it will be likely to commit a crime in the future. If the machine determines that you won't commit a crime in the future, it displays good. If the machine determines that you will commit a crime in the future, it displays bad. Oh, and I plan on using this out of all things for college admissions. According to this Orwellian machine, this person will go to college. That person won't. For a whole myriad of reasons, the concept of predicting crime is really problematic. There's an entire movie starring Tom Cruise about it. But my totalitarian fourth grade self never saw the minority report. In fact, I never really considered ethical concerns when doodling insubstantial creations in my notebook. But that might just because I was in elementary school. But ethical concerns in innovation extend far beyond the pages of my fourth grade composition notebook. Corporations are increasingly pushing new frontiers and technological ability with new innovations making policy decisions that will affect human safety and society introducing and exacerbating ethical concerns across industries. While ethics appear to be an issue that is indifferent and disconnected from innovation, ethics is fundamentally concerned with anything that could promote or obstruct human well-being and behaviors, which includes innovation. In ethics, innovation is generally considered to be moral as it introduces new and desirable things. Furthermore, according to Chris McDonald, a senior fellow at Duke University's Keenan Institute, accelerating innovation is a worthy policy objective as it increases our social well-being and enriches, enriches human lives. In extension, it seems that if innovation is categorically a moral obligation. However, newness and innovation are not always synonyms for good. Let's take a look at CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing. To anyone who isn't aware, CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromatic Repeats, which are found in bacteria's DNA. CRISPR-Cas9 is adapted from naturally occurring genome editing system in bacteria so that researchers can modify genetic material. CRISPR has tremendous potential to prevent genetic illnesses and cancers, such as Huntington's disease, sarcoma, and multiple myeloma. However, the concept of gene editing raises ethical concerns, especially if it's used for non-therapeutic and enhancement purposes in the future. In 2018, He Zhuangkui, a biophysics researcher, claimed that he created the first genetically edited infant using CRISPR-Cas9. He had modified a key gene in human embryos that are thought to bring resistance to HIV, and implanted these gene-edited embryos into two unknowing women. This announcement was met with widespread criticism and condemnation from the scientists and ethicists alike. Experts agree that there are safer and more effective ways to prevent HIV infections, and the experiment was deemed premature, irresponsible, and unjustified because it exposed babies to risk associated with gene editing such as mosaicism and off-topic effects. For little to no benefit. Guangdong province, in their investigation of this incident, concluded that he had defied government bans and conducted the research in pursuit of his own personal fame and gain. This is just one example of a researcher misusing innovation for their own personal gain. Innovations have the potential to create or destroy jobs, decrease or increase crime protect 
or invade one's privacy. Arasi Sethumadavan, the Senior Design Research Manager on Microsoft's Ethics and Society team, states that most product teams launch new technologies without fully considering the ethical impact on humans, a practice that can lead to serious consequences. However, these decisions are often based on a corporation's intent for the product, not considering the product's potential risks and unforeseen uses. Furthermore, under a capitalist economy, corporations are solely incentivized to innovate so they can increase their profit. While innovations may be monetarily positive, the innovations are not necessarily ethically positive. Therefore, responsible innovation is crucial. We must not irresponsibly chase innovation at all costs. While it is impossible to predict the discrete consequences of one's innovation, it is morally imperative to try to do so. So, how do we ensure that future innovations are ethical? Christopher Fabian, the co-founder of UNICEF Office of Innovation, bridged the distinct words of ethics and innovation by proposing that organizations use an ethical framework. The UNICEF Office of Innovation uses an ethical framework based on nine principles. Designing with the user, understanding the existing ecosystem, designing for scale, building for sustainability, being data-driven, using open data such as sources and standards, reusing and improving, doing no harm, and being collaborative. From these nine principles, Fabian built a simple ethical framework to evaluate and guide innovative products. Projects. First, innovation is humanistic, solving big problems through human ingenuity, imagination, and entrepreneurialism that can come from anywhere. Second, Innovation is non-hierarchical, drawing ideas from many different sources and incubating small, agile teams to test and iterate on them with user feedback. Third, innovation is participatory, designing with and not for real people. And finally, innovation is sustainable, building skills even if most individual endeavors will ultimately fail in their societal goals. Ethical frameworks are just tools to guide organizations in making ethical decisions. There will always be flaws in ethical frameworks, but this is because ethical frameworks are ultimately based in ethical theories. A purely utilitarian framework may be great if you want to maximize happiness, but it could also potentially result in the infringement of someone's rights and unjust allocation of resources to achieve this purely utilitarian outcome. We need to understand that a certain decision may be moral or immoral, depending on the ethical system the framework is based on. In addition to ethical frameworks, we need to shift the paradigm of innovation. Localization represents a fundamental shift towards a more human-centric approach in innovation, grounded in human needs, insight, and ingenuity. We need to understand that people's needs are not black and white, they're not neatly packaged into a social good. Moreover, building separate classes of products for consumers and another for those in need create false divides, as well creating products that are neither sustainable nor scalable. If we implement ethical frameworks to spur open dialogue and collaboration and shift the paradigm of innovation, we can ensure that future innovations will have the greatest impact on the most vulnerable communities in the world. If an organization has a difficult dilemma, they can rely on their ethical framework to make informed and moral decisions. Shifting the paradigm of innovation can ensure that innovations will always consider a person's well-being before profits and other motivations. If there is a common vision on how to approach innovations ethically, we will ensure that great innovations will have the best impact on the world's most marginalized populations. Thank you.